Welcome back. It was first published in Afrikaans by Tafelberg under the title Die Bibliothek an die Ende van die Wereld. I'm talking about Etienne van Heerden's sensational page turner that has now been translated into English by Hendrietta Rose Innes as a library to flee. This historical fiction book documents the turbulent times in which we live where issues such as privacy and identity, fake news and fact, and race and ethnicity inflame passions. To help us unpack this read further, let's now rope in Etienne van, der, well, van Heerden and he joins us now via Zoom from Cape Town. Etienne, a very good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. Welcome. Morning. Morning. Nice to see you. And good to have you on the show this morning, Etienne. Now, give us a brief outline of what this book is all about and where you got the idea to write it from. Well, the book is set in the uh, roughly, it's a first take of history of the years 215 uh, to about 217 in Cape Town and, and Shanghai, mostly in China. Uh, those were the years of the fees must fall movement. Those were the years when we all became very conscious of surveillance capital, you know, cameras all over, data being the new oil, and our privacy being intruded. So it's a novel about identity. And firstly, the identity uh, uh, wars in, in South Africa and world war, uh, worldwide. But then, of course, also the whole idea of, of surveillance capital and mm -hmm. how that also is a kind of colonialism. Yeah. Uh, our, our information, our privacy, etc., being invaded. So this, the novel sees this as actually the big library to flee, the, 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 the data capturing by especially surveillance capital. Yeah, yeah. Let's now get into the story and some of the interesting characters that we follow, such as Ian Brand and Tulikumalu. Now, do unpack for us, if you can, these two people and how they sort of carry the story from start to finish. Yes. Well, they find themselves, they, they postgraduate students. They are both slightly older than students usually are on a campus. It's a postgraduate course taken mostly by working people. So they attend this class in translation under the stewardship of Dr. Stephen Elliott, a classical uh, white liberal in a tweed jacket. And in the class is Tuli Kumalo. She's uh, from exile dynasty. She grew up in London. Her dad came out when, back to South Africa when the exiles were coming back and she finished her schooling in Cape Town. Now she's on campus and she's a Fees Must Fall leader. Uh, Ian Brandt finds himself in the class as well. He's up against Thule. He's got a history as, as, as an Afrikaner dissident in the 80s. But he finds himself in a situation where, as he feels, it's rhetorical violence and his whole world is shaken. And then there's Jerome. Uh, he's from the Northern Cape, if you wish, from colored background. Jerome is there. Uh, he's a sort of an in-between figure, also struggling with, with issues of belonging and identity and language, etc., etc. So there they sit in this translation class and they meant to translate text one text into a, another language but they find them the big problem is translating the times these exploding events around them how do you translate this to understanding and how do we translate one another to each other so Tuli must translate herself to to uh, to Ian Brandt, and Ian tries to explain himself to Tuli, so they find more and more that they're speaking less of, of translation of texts and more about how do we understand what's happening mm. to us. So that's a small portion, that's the start of the novel, yeah, yeah. the seminar class on UCT campus. And then, of course, it explodes with the two great elephants fighting. Tuli's dad is into surveillance capital, and Ian Brandt being a a lawyer in, in dealing in digital matters and business. He's being drawn into a company, the Stellenbosch <laughs> Capital, mm. Stellenbosch Mafia, as it's popularly, popularly called, and they want to install a whole system of surveillance as well. So yeah. these two elephants fighting about, uh, about the deals. And I see that there's a couple of noteworthy themes in this book. Now, talk to us about one of the themes, which is Fees Must Fall movement that features quite prominently in this book and how you've sort of uh, used Tuli's character to highlight this issue. 
Well, they find themselves on the campus, and of course there, there's the great issue of of what was happening there and the methods used and the new language used by, by students. You know, it was a great shift in vocabulary. Let's let's take a typical white English speaking liberal at UCT campus. Suddenly this is happening. This is what Dr. Stephen Elliott sits with and he doesn't really understand. He's shocked when Rhodes statue is being removed. Uh, Ian Brandt is an Afrikaner thinks it's a wonderful idea to remove old, old, old roads from campus. And, and Thule, of course, is behind the movement that says we must think differently, we must use a different language. So it's a clash of grammar. It's, it's a clash of, of how we express ourselves and what language we use. For example, let's say uh, the white English liberal establishment would think it's awful to, to throw poo on a statue. And Thule has to explain to the class, but listen, this is a method of, of the fees must fall students. It's a strategy to explain to the white students and the university regime what the living conditions of black people in the townships are like. If you are poor mm -hmm. and you live in a township, this is how you live. So it's a it's a it's a it's a clash of, of ideas. You get the feeling of this term rhetorical. Uh, violence, not so, mm. that what they wish upon what one another. Then, of course, Ian makes the mistake of, of launching a tweet, and uh, he becomes the tweet boer, and he becomes <laughs> cat boers. and then the whole story explodes. <laughs> you know, I've read somewhere that you travel to Europe, Africa, and particularly China while researching this book. Yeah. Tell us more about this, yeah? Well, yes, I lectured in China and I did some other research and, and work there as well, a few visits, and uh, Europe as well, and, and uh, Africa, and so on. So I traveled widely, you know, and it took some years to write the novel. I mean, it's, it's, it's substantial, so it's a lot of pages. Yeah. And the, the interesting thing, you know, about research when you're a writer and you research a novelist thinks in terms of and then, and then, and then. So you sit with all this research, it's a novel of ideas, but your big duty is to turn this into story, into a page turner. Mm. So great part of my work was not only the research travels and, and talking to many people, most who didn't want to be named in the afterward, uh, because it's um, it's a sensitive subject, um, surveillance capital. Uh, but then, of course, to turn this into story was was the big was the was the big job of the novelist. You know, to see to cliffhangers, to mm -hmm. tension building, mm -hmm. yeah. to character not being talking heads, but really people experiencing these turbulent times, times of of anguish and, and pain for for many. All right, Etienne, lovely chatting to you. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Have you. Have a good day. You too. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was our Sunday morning guest author, Etienne van Uruden, and we've been discussing his new book titled A Library to Flee.